Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with CB Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we are going to be talking about season four of Stranger Things. That is right. You did not miss here. We are talking about the entirety of season four because for the first time in a long time, me and Cheryl have actually matched up on on shows and on the amount that we are both willing to watch in a short weekend. So as of this recording, it has only been out for like four days. So absolute spoiler warning here. It is understandable if you have not finished it, but also if you have not finished it, you don't want to be here because we are going to spoil it for you. So after you take your time and finish the season, come back and watch our show because it's also going to take you a while to finish it. Those episodes are like an hour and 15 minutes a piece with the last episode basically being a movie. So it's okay. Take your yeah. time. But, Just to be but clear, do come back. It is, it is only the part one because there's going to be more episodes coming out in July. Um but yeah, it's May True. 30th today, so um, for your reference. <laughs> yes, so we will be back and seeing the part two in July, but yeah, so we got some time. But yep, well, we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So uh, we didn't actually plan on talking about the entirety of this season, right? We were originally just going to talk about like the first episode of season one, um, but it came out. And this is the same weekend that Obi-Wan came out, so that was great. We watched Obi-Wan as well. We'll be talking about that later. But the whole thing with it was that Obi-Wan's only two episodes, right? So you watch those two episodes, and then it's done for now. Uh, but Stranger Things, the entirety, the entire thing came out. And in Stranger Things fashion, I don't know how they do it, but there's something about this show. This is actually one of the few shows that I readily binge in a short amount of time. When I first watched season one of Stranger Things, I finished it in a, I think I finished it in a day. I was visiting my friend in Santa Barbara. He was out and like, I just watched Stranger Things all day and I finished the entire season in one day and I've never done that with any show. Like, how yeah. how, how did that happen for you? Um, exactly the same way you describe it. I feel like it's just the one of those kind of shows where you just have to keep watching it. it it'd be too odd to just stop. Um, mm -hmm. I, although I don't think I watched it all in one day, I think, um, I think it was getting too late and we had to, or is that true? I don't even remember anymore, but it was definitely <laughs> binged. Um, I don't remember if I had to sleep on it, um, because of like the time it was, but, um, definitely one of those shows and I, I don't really know what it is about the show either. Maybe it's just because they don't really end the episode at a point where it has any closure like you literally don't get yeah. any closure on anything until the very end um yeah. but even even like for this one because it's only part one of season four there's no closure and so it just kind of became frustrating that we don't get to watch more and we have to wait until july for the rest of it to come out yeah but at least we don't have to wait until like another year so that's true <laughs> i'll at least yeah. i'll at least take that but... yeah i give it that it's it is nice that they do wrap up the storyline after each season before they start a new like crazy thing that happens and it's just like every season is a new crazy thing that happens to the same people right so do you know if this is the final season or are they still going to be doing more seasons after this? I heard that this is the final season. Mm, okay. So then that would make sense why they did like this whole two part thing because they really want to go out with a bang. Yeah. So, all right. Well, one of the things there's, I don't think like going ahead, just jumping into talking about like the actual season. I don't think that it is without faults, but for me personally, I feel like for me, it was one of my favorite seasons to watch for, for Stranger Things. Not, it doesn't, it's not better than season one. Um, season one is like hands, like it's on yeah. its own, By it's far. its own level. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think any season can come close to season one, but like season three, um, I, I enjoy season three. Season two could be a little meandering at times, but um, 
I still enjoyed all of the seasons, but I could see that there weren't some seasons weren't as enjoyable as others. And this one, while I did enjoy it, I can definitely see that they had trouble figuring out what they want certain characters to do. At least at the for the part one that we're at right now, like the one thing that Stranger Things did really well was that it would have multiple storylines converge in a way that felt satisfying and made sense. But within this first part, and I do want to keep stressing that it is part one, so we have not seen the full story yet, there are certain storylines that haven't really converged on the overall main narrative by the close of part one, and therefore it doesn't feel as satisfying and doesn't necessarily feel as good as the show has been with other seasons. I definitely agree with you on that. Um, That's actually one of the things that I noticed um, first and one of my biggest issues with it is just that it doesn't feel very like connected and formed. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is because everyone like it starts out the show with everyone kind of separated already um where you have l and will and jonathan um and another you know they're like i don't know exactly where they are but they're two thousand miles away from hawkins and then you have everyone else still in hawkins and then um what's what's her name the their mom um joyce Joyce uh, goes off looking for Hopper, so they're basically gone the entire time, and they have that one storyline that has nothing to do with anything else happening with the kids, and so that feels very disconnected, so every time we cut to them and that storyline, it gets a little confusing. I'm not confusing, but I just feel very removed every time we cut to and from that storyline. And then you have the kids, and the kids have another thing going on 2,000 miles away. And then you have the kids in Hawkins who are doing all these things together. And, like, be it, I know that's kind of what Stranger Things is, um, keeping, like, everyone separated, and they kind of just converge into one storyline at the end, like you mentioned. But I think the problem with this is that they're too far away from each other. They're, like, in different countries or states or whatever, and they're not talking to each other um, occasionally. At least mm-hmm. in the other seasons, right? They have like the walkie talkies. They do a little bit about uh, a little bit of that when they're in Hawkins for the kids that are in Hawkins. But then you have these two, well, actually three, because there's the Mike and Will and Jonathan doing one thing, and then there's Joyce and um, Hopper on another one, and then um, and Murray, and then you have Elle with her. Other, so there's that separate that separate thing and there's three different storylines going over there and then you have like two um in in hawkins and they're talking on walkie talkies so i feel like the most interesting part is when they're in hawkins because they're doing that thing where they're getting bits and pieces of information from each other through walk the walkie talkie yeah and i the stuff that's happening in hawkins absolutely is the most interesting stuff and the way that it ties together eventually with the flashback that we're seeing for um, Eleven. And the flashback, we see bits and pieces, and then after Eleven gets to where she needs to go, then we start seeing more of the flashback through this kind of her trying to get her powers back um, as far as, like, what she's doing in the story and why we're seeing this as far as, like, that device um, is concerned. I think it works. And, like... That storyline and the storyline in Hawkins, those are connected, and it pays off by the end of this part uh, of of part one when you see the villain that the villain reveal, and that feels that feels good. And everything like one of the things that I loved about this season was the the horror elements and how dark it got because it felt like they've always had this element of horror with Stranger Things, but this this season felt like oh my gosh this is like a ghost story horror movie while well, where the other one was like monster horror this is like some freddy krueger enters into your dreams mixed with some i don't know supernatural ghost like killing you horror like with the way that the people died the way they looked and everything it looked painful it was disturbing 
and it just it just felt you felt uneasy when you would see the corpses the corpses were like these twisted husks it wasn't like something that had been eaten like the demogorgon would like eat you or something this and it felt like whereas the demogorgon was a physical presence this is a little bit closer to the mind flare where it's something that exists but at the same time the the, the what it's doing in the real world it, it feels like you can't touch it, right? You can't put your hand on it. Like even with season three with the Mind Flare, it was working through like regular people, right? So there was still some type of physical presence it had, but with this guy, uh, with um, Vecna, he, it, he has no physical presence. He has no humans that he's working with in the real world. It's just a thing of you've been marked and then you just die. And so it's really, it makes you feel like really uncomfortable and then what makes it worse is that the people that he's going after are all people that have some sort of trauma in their lives and things that they're trying to get over. So he's preying on vulnerable people. So it feels even worse when you see these people be killed because you ha you understand that they're not bad people. They're just they're they're people that actually are hurting and are trying to get their lives together. When he goes after Max, it's like, oh no, um, you know she's still reeling over her brother's death. So. Like the fact that he preys on such a vulnerable group of teenagers, I think also just kind of adds to the horror. Yeah, it's definitely a lot scarier than um, the other seasons, and I was quite uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> watching it. And I, I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about um, Max surviving. Um, I mean, because the two kids already died, um, but they're also like two kids we don't care about. Um, right. So I thought it would it would have been interesting if Max died, but then I don't know how else would they really f be able to test the Move theory forward. on yeah on like it can't just be like you know that Vecna keeps killing kids and they take forever to figure it out. So uh, right. yeah, it makes sense, and they let it get pretty far too. So there is a there is a always a question like while you know the no. scenes playing out like whether or no. not max is going to survive there was never a point where like i'm like no nah, they're not going to kill him. they're nev never going to kill max um like for a second there i really thought like maybe she won't make it and Yo. like she got really close and then and then they would learn from that and then figure out how to stop it in the future um but yeah she survived so Spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but like like you, I felt the same way. Like I had money because I was saying that in order to make this last season feel like or like there's there's something at stake. Like I entered into the season, I said to my roommate, they have to kill one of the kids. Like if they want to feel really like like this is like real, then one of the kids has to die. And my money was on Will. I actually thought that they would kill Will because also Will doesn't do anything. Um, now he hasn't really done anything since you know season two um so i was like i don't i don't see will surviving but then you're watching and you're seeing like max kind of like start getting targeted and at first i was like they're not killing max they're absolutely not killing max and then she gets lifted into the air and i was like and then they start doing the whole like clips like i, I watch way too much too much anime whenever you start seeing flashbacks of a character's life they're about to die and that's what they did with Max. They show the flashbacks of when she got there, becoming friends, getting with Lucas, and they run through her entire life. And I was just like, oh, they're about to kill Max. I legitimately said that out loud, and I believed it. I could not actually believe that she survived. It, was, it came as more surprise that she lived in that moment than the fact that she, than the fact that she wouldn't have. Because I started off being like, She's going to live. And then I was convinced she's going to die. And then they got me to be like, oh, wow, she, to be surprised that she actually lives. So that level of, I guess, emotional roller coasters, I can appreciate that the show found a way to, to play with me with to play with me to that level. Yeah, I think that's also one of the interesting things about Stranger Things and like basically all of the seasons of Stranger Things is that we really don't know what's gonna happen. I don't think there's um, at any point where I could really predict what 
the the answer is or like how it's going to happen or how it's all going to play out and i think that's probably also another one of the reasons why stranger things is so bingeable because it's just constant reveal and constant discovery and constant more questions about what's going to happen maybe not so much like um like everything like you know uh i think some people could figure out quite early on that one is Vecna um, because they kind of point to one a lot. Um, they like, find out about one until later in the season, though, because we don't when we yeah. when we start the episode one, we just we don't even see that same actor. You don't see that actor until she goes back into the past. But yeah, that's yeah. like so yeah it's probably to take some time but yes you could probably figure it out after you get a little further into the season for sure yeah i mean they don't they i think it's not it's kind of early on i think when they kind of point out that there is no number one. Oh right when they say that you know number one went missing or something like that yeah yeah but besides that um i don't know <laughs> um mm-hmm. Some other thing I don't know how I feel about is how they're now pushing Nancy and Oh my Steve gosh, you read together. my freaking mind. <laughs> I was going to bring that up too. That bothers me so much, but let, what, what do you have to say on that? I don't, honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel, I think I kind of like them together, but I also have kind of attached to Nancy and Jonathan being together from before but because they weren't together like at all in this season I feel like they because they they removed that it was a lot easier to accept that Nancy and Steve might get back together um my problem with it though is that I really like Steve I think he's a really good character and a really good person like that's why his character is so likable and he's supposed to be like a really cool likable popular jock guy that all the girls want but now because of this whole nancy thing they're kind of turning it into uh like he can't get any girl and because he can't get anyone he's gonna end up with nancy again because she's the only one that like ever really had any feelings for him in the past um so i kind of feel like it it belittles him it takes away his um his coolness his edge his basically i feel like his character got stripped down a little bit like almost like he got demoted (laughs) Mm -hmm. not because of nancy but because they're really playing it like he's having a hard time getting a girl right so Steve's my favorite character. I I love Steve. Um, me personally, I would love it if Steve ended up with nobody. I actually think that it'd be great if Steve was just single. Um, I think he works that way. I think he. I, I feel like it'd be really weird to see him in like some kind of relationship. And they still do try to show that he is a jock. Like they show that you know he's going on these dates with girls, but he doesn't like any of them. Um, and that's why him and Robin are talking about because he's like, oh, I don't know what I want in a girl, and she's like, well, I know exactly what I want, which is why we should we should fuse and everything else like that. Um, and so I don't mind him like necessarily like being like, oh, okay, well, you know, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to get a girl, or whatever. But I would I would have loved it actually if his character was just like, you know what, I actually don't need that. If he got to the point where he's like, you know what, I'm good. I'm just I'm just me. So like hit them trying to like put him together with Nancy not only is that messing with this Nancy Jonathan pairing which I I think worked and was earned um and also I'm like okay guys the only thing the way you're making uh, this work right now is by not having Jonathan basically with Nancy like close in close proximity but at the same time I know that Jonathan just had to deal with getting his his house shot up and had to like run for his life and saw people literally die in front of him while like trying to get back to 11. So I know that Jonathan isn't just sitting on his his butt, just not doing anything, not caring. And they have this one scene where they show Jonathan and Nancy talking to their friends and their friends are like, oh, well, the person that you're with isn't good because of this. And then you see both Nancy and Jonathan talk about why the other person is great. And like, when they do that, you're like, oh, 
yeah, you guys are great for each other. Even with these other people in your ears talking about why this other person is bad, you guys are both, like, you could say you're making excuses, but everything they're saying is right about the other person. And they're saying it about each other. So when I saw that cut, I was like, oh, this is the show telling me, yeah, they actually do work together. They just need to stop listening to these other people. They have some things to work out for sure, but they absolutely work together. So I am not as excited about um Steve, the Steve and Nancy thing, and it actually kind of upset me, but yeah, that's that's how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, because they're hinting pretty hard at it, so I don't really know. I wouldn't put it past them if they didn't make it happen. It's almost right, like Right, because it's hinting taunting. too hard? Yeah, but it's almost like they're taunting us that it might happen because we do... I mean, I did like them together, but I, also they... Nancy and Jonathan have been like a thing for the long longest time and Steve was okay with it and he was fine like yeah. he got over it um yeah. and like you know the seasons moved on uh, with Nancy and Jonathan being a pair and now now it's like we are starting off the season with them like you know being in the outs and everything so I don't know I've Ugh, maybe they're just making a they're starting up trouble just just <laughs> just because so that we have some drama in there and some like romance drama that we didn't really have for a while maybe but see when they start doing that the first thing i start thinking is steve's gonna die I, i'm <gasps> like oh that's why i'm like that's why you guys are doing this so i, and I was like oh my god i really hope that that's not the case but you know i, mean, well, I think that would happen now that you say it that makes total sense yeah, that's what I was reading when I was when I was reading into that, and I'm like, okay, because I yeah, I kind of felt like yeah, I was like, there's no way this is actually going to happen. So one of them's yeah. gonna die. Yeah, I was like, it then, might be <laughs> Jonathan. Maybe, maybe. Um, we'll see. Maybe I mean, Jonathan be... dying makes it okay for Nancy and Steve to get back together. Maybe I hope they don't do that because that feels cheap to me. But um, especially for like Will, but and like everything Will's gone through. But but what I don't if know, Jonathan Will... has an amazing death? What if it's like the best death ever seen in cinema? Oh my gosh, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, I have. Uh, I'm, also, like yeah, that, uh, I'm like oh, seven now. I'm like seven. Of course you are. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and I also would like to see them do more with Will. Like, so there's this thing with Will where I'm not sure what they're trying to do. On one hand, I'm like, are they trying to say that Will is gay and that he's, like, you know, into his friend? Um, but then on the other hand, I'm like, are, is he just try are they trying to just say that, oh, Will is just, you know, he's really, he really, really misses his friend. Um, but whatever they're trying to do with Will, I feel like they're not doing enough with him. Like, his character just is just kind of there. And... We haven't really even seen Will truly interact with the other the other cast members. Like on I mean in this season specifically, on any type of like real emotional level. Um he just spends most of the season kind of watching Eleven get bullied or complaining to Mike about, you know, their friendship or groaning about the fact that Argyle and Jonathan are getting high. But we're not really seeing much of him and he doesn't feel like he's offering much. So yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of frustrated with Will's character right now and I kind of want to see them do more. And even like part of me that was saying, I think that they're going to kill Will came from the fact that, you know, he, when Mike came, he had that little wrapped up picture or whatever that he wasn't showing, um, that he wasn't showing Eleven. Um, and so she didn't know what it was and then he wanted to give it to Mike, but he didn't, he wasn't able to give it to Mike. And then we still haven't seen what it is, which makes, but he, we saw him grab it when they were like trying to leave and stuff, which makes me think that Mike's going to look at it after Will dies. And so we'll see. We'll see. There's a couple of people that I think are on the chopping block coming in part two. Apparently. <laughs> I'm like, I, I thought I was the morbid one where I want people to die, but I, I, but you're, I guess maybe I, I just get excited when people die and you're all like, I predict Who people will die. <laughs> Who are you trying to kill? I understand how story structure works. How, <laughs> like, I know what you're, I know what this is. This is a plant. This is a plant and it's going to pay off. And the only way the payoff makes sense is if the character is either dead or thought to be dead. 
Meanwhile, I'm like, yay, you did it. You killed somebody <laughs> that matters. Oh, man. So, <laughs> yeah, and they do, and I do think they need to kill somebody that matters by the end of this. But, you know, um, yeah. talking about the part that feels the most disconnected, the stuff with Hopper. Um, I understand why it's there, but I absolutely agree that it feels the most disconnected from the rest of the story. Where Jonathan and Mike and Will, where, where their adventure, you can at least say, hey, this needed to exist because we needed to show Eleven having this life before she basically goes to go train. Um, and now those characters, they're not really doing anything to impact the story. They're just looking for Eleven, but we already know where Eleven is. So we'll have to see when they find Eleven what that leads to. But as far as the, the stuff with Hopper, it is the most disconnected. It doesn't feel like it has anything to go to deal with what's going on in Hawkins. And in many ways, sometimes it can feel like the least interesting storyline to follow. Um, do you think that, Do you, I mean, I guess there's a good chance that it will come back together by the end, but I mean, how are you feeling about it so far? I mean, I, I really liked that they started off with giving Murray the, um, the ability to do hand, hand, hand combat. <laughs> and like, oh, let's make him a black belt. That'll make him really useful then. Um, and like why it makes sense that he would be able to go to Russia with, um, with Joyce and for the two of them to like, be able to handle it because he can take care of, you know, the guys with guns, I guess. Um, but I, I'm also a little just kind of thrown off because with, you know, everyone being captured and, like, in the jail and, and stuff like that, now they're involved with the government and everything. I'm like, how the heck are they going to get back to the <laughs> States? They can't just, like, show their passport and be like, and then get on a plane because... They've been, you know, breaking into prisons and breaking people out of prison and doing illegal stuff in Russia. Russia. Um, right. And, like, at that time, Russia and the U.S. are kind of, I mean, and I guess still, um, in the middle of the Cold War. So <laughs> I feel like it would be pretty challenging for them to be able to get back to the States unless they find a, a gate yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so we'll see how that goes because i i mean i guess since a demigorgon is there they would there would probably be a gate somewhere and i suppose that's how hopper got there in the first place in so the first place. uh yeah. yeah yeah we'll have to see uh i'm sure like they show a preview of part two by the end um and you can see them exploring more of the facility so there's like more than likely they will find the gate and they will have to make it back to see what's happening with Beckna and the kids and the regular um in Hawkins and so I'm sure everyone's coming together the biggest the next biggest issue that I have with this season or I guess the biggest question is actually related around Vecna because I love Vecna's design I love how Vecna kills people I love the culmination of finding out who Vecna is um and the and the fact that you can actively start to figure it out um, before it is ever revealed to you, like all that is great. But it leads to questions. So one, it is pretty convenient that um, Eleven completely blocked out a whole villain backstory um, through through trauma and amnesia, but fine, story device, whatever. But two, why hasn't Vecna showed up in season one, two, or three? Because... I don't think that this season actually answered what made Vecna start killing now. Like, they did say that, oh, he's like the general for the Mind Flare and he's opening up portals, but he could have been doing that whenever, right? He could have been doing that in season one. I mean, and he is definitely an independent individual because he's just like Eleven. So why, why now? Why wasn't he appearing back in season one two and three when the mind flare was doing its thing and so and i don't think that this this part, first part of the season answered that effectively for me yeah and i know that they actually asked that question in the um 
in the, the series. Show. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. because they were wondering why they had that one survivor. I think his name is Victor. That's in mm -hmm. the um, the insane asylum, and um, how there was only that incident, and then now, and then nothing happened for the longest time, and now all of a sudden it's happening again. So uh, maybe they will address it later. I don't know. Um, I hope they do because they asked the question in in the <laughs> show. So um, my problem though with Vecna is when they actually go to that house and um, and they're like they're like with their flashlights shining up oh, at yeah. the light bulb um because that's when i guess fred the character fred was in the middle killed. of being killed and then yeah. the light bulb explodes um and they're like oh this is where he is when he kills people but um it doesn't make sense why the light bulb would be intact <laughs> Because he's killed other people there before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm continuity thing there. <laughs> so I, I, I want to like maybe someone goes there to the um, to the house and changes the light bulb so he can kill another person. Maybe, but <laughs> uh, you know, it, and so it was a light bulb in the house that exploded. Wasn't there flashlights that exploded? Uh, they, I think they all exploded. The light bulb okay. definitely exploded. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Go that back is and watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very good point. <laughs> I I thought it was interesting that Beckna didn't couldn't sense that they were there. Um, that too, yeah. I, th I thought that he yeah. would. Maybe he was too like high on murder that to to <laughs> notice that there too were high a bunch on of kids. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe it's just because like, you know it's it's strange because like the kids were able to sense each other, right? When uh, the teenagers, when the older teenagers or the you know, twenty year olds are in one world, they're able to connect with the young teens in the other world. They can hear them, and the young teens can obviously respond uh, with the or see the lights responding. So it was kind of funny or interesting that Vecna can't hear people in his house, which is his you know den of murder. Um, like he can't hear them talking in the real world to know that they're there, but they were able to hear each other talking when they were in two different worlds, but in the same house. So the rules get a little wonky sometimes, but I'm willing to still suspend enough disbelief that like I can still enjoy the show. Like regardless of these little nitpicky things that we're bringing up, at the end of the day, I had fun. Like I watched the, I binged the entire show in like a couple of days. Like I want to say in two days, but like it's fun i love i love the psychics i love the horror i love like the the, the scooby-doo mystery aspect of let's figure out what's going on the characters are great like you know steve is still one of the best characters that i like i think they've done something with but also i forget the guy's name but the the guy who is the leader of the dnd the dnd club oh like, yes eddie when you first when you first meet him, you think he's going to be a total douche. And then he ends up being a really chill guy. And you like him too. So, like, I I really like what Stranger Things does with his characters. Um, unfortunately, their, uh, their, their human villain antagonist is, like, you know, so cookie cutter, like, just evil that I don't see how they're going to, like help him be characterized but in general they have a, they do characters really well so um at the end of the day yeah i had a lot of fun with this yeah it's definitely a scooby-doo vibe um i really enjoy it there's like you you mentioned um there's definitely a lot of nitpicky issues there's questions about how the mechanics of things work i had the same issues with the previous seasons but at the mm -hmm. end of the day it's interesting it's fun um i really like the characters i think they have really good strong um unique characters um and i actually really like eddie um he's one of my favorite characters this season um uh, being a new one um i almost i was gonna say i almost forget that he's supposed to be a nerd yeah but he's actually kind of cool for he's someone cool. who is like labeled as someone who's not supposed to be cool um because he, he like he wears a leather jacket he's kind of a smooth talker like you know he was with chrissy 
So, mm. um, I mean, I, I feel like he's a more realistic representation of, of like, a real person, like, nowadays, like, a, a dungeon master guy who does other stuff, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's, he just seems like a regular guy. Um, you can't put him in a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, all in all, I'm excited for the part two to come out. Um, I think there's like a little bit of issues with it, and that's why I maybe didn't enjoy it uh, as much as I would have liked to. But um, but I, I still liked it enough to enjoy it and still want to keep watching more. So. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. That's what we thought about Season 4 of Stranger Things. We'll probably talk about a little bit more on our Twitch channel. So if you want to check us out and see more of our conversations outside of what we put on YouTube, you can check us out on twitch.tv slash c3films, and we'd love to see you guys over there. But what did you guys think about this? What did you think about Season 4? Have you finished it? Did you like it? Did you have the same kind of problems that we had? Is it your favorite season? Is it your least favorite season? Whatever you thought about it, comment below. Let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, subscribe, even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and we'll see you all next time.